Civil Party, Mr. President, Jonas. I have five questions to be put to Mr. Kiu Sampon and Mr. Noon Chia. First, are you aware of the arrest and the disappearance of my father, Yen Sidaret, who was a professor and a colonel with his base in Bonti Daik near Nea Lung? Second question Have you ever thought of the consequence of the killing of the, the of the separations of the family members caused by the Khmer Rouge and by Jew? Have you awakened and feel regret for your participation in the regime which caused great sufferings to the entire nation and the entire people? My third question, in your capacity as a high intellectual, do you dare to tell the truth regarding the events that took place under the Khmer Rouge regime so that the nation, the people in the world know? In your capacity as your senior leaders and as the high intellectuals, and that you gained your popularity because of your intellectuality under the previous regime. My first question Do you plan to express your sorrow? to the world, to the nation, and to myself. The last question, in your capacity as the president of the presidium of state presidium, what did you know about the level of the living condition of the people who, were, who suffered from hunger, from detentions, arbitrary arrest, and tortured and killing under your regime. Mr. President, that is all the uh, my five questions uh, already uh, put. The President, thank you. I refer these five questions uh, from the civil party to the co-accused beginning with Mr. Kiu Sampon first and followed by Mr. Nguyen Chia. Mr. Kiu Sampon, you have the floor now. Mr. Kiu Sampon, my respect to the President of the Chamber and my respect to your honors, members of the bench, and my respect to everyone in and around the courtroom, and good afternoon, Mr. Civil Party, Mr. Yin Rumdul. I would like to share with you that if I were you, I also had the same sorrow and pain. For your first question, may I inform you that I had never known your father. I had never known Mr. Yen Sidaret. And I feel extremely sorry for the disappearance and the brutal killing of your father.
may I inform you that since I fled the city and took refuge in the forest, I was under the protection of the leaders of the Khmer Rouge up until 1979. Therefore, I was living in a condition that was separate from the ordinary residence. From 1970 to 1979, I had to live close to the leaders of the Democratic Kampuchea and my role in the Democratic Kampuchea period was to save uh, my life. Never had I known the atrocity committed by the military commanders and leaders. These notorious acts of those leaders deserve condemnation. I did not know the great suffering of our people. I considered uh, this notorious act as the act of the crook and I have already heard the testimony as well as the statement of suffering of other civil parties uh, thus far. I do share my condolences with uh, them and their family. I am not an ideologist of the uh, Communist Party of Kampuchea, but I uphold my idealism uh, that is to share with the people at that time to help reconstruct our country and develop our country particularly uh, to ensure that our country is saved and secured. For your second question, once again, I would like to express my sincere uh, condolence with you, and I strongly condemn uh, their act, and these perpetrators must be brought to justice, and their punishment must be proportionate to the gravity the silliness, the stupidity of these people. The fact that I joined the Democratic Cambodia was not to kill Cambodian people. It was not my intention, but it was my determination to have pres our country to protect our country and to develop our country. But unfortunately, it turned out to be completely, a, uh, it turned out to be a complete disaster. I have already 
told the court that I will stand by the court and I will, of course, cooperate with the court to the best of my ab ability and knowledge in their pursuit of ascertaining the truth. That's why I am making every effort to respond to each and every question by the civil parties. And I am also prepared to answer to all questions posed by other parties to the proceedings. As for your fourth question, I would like to respond to you as follows. Yesterday, I put my hand together to express my apology to Madame Hua Chantha and through Madame Hua Chantha, I would like to express my apology to Cambodian people across the country uh, who suffered uh, so far in the regime. And today, once again, I would like to express my sincere apology to you. I would like to express my sincere condolences uh, to your family, to you and your families, particularly your fathers and mothers and other beloved relatives who died during the period. I understand the great suffering you have had to endure. Question number five. Looking from outside, people would consider that I was someone of authority. Indeed, at that time, my title was huge. But in reality, I had no power at all. I had no authority whatsoever to order the arrest of anyone. I was working in the top position that I did not know what was going on uh, on the ground, particularly ordinary people at the base. I did not know that the people had been tortured and abused and mistreated. I did not know that the people had been detained arbitrarily in the base. And once again, I would like to express my apology I apologize from my heart and I, even though I did not play any role in the decision-making body of the Democratic Cambodia, as I said uh, this morning, a rotten apple in a basket would ruin the rest. And as a matter of fact, I am not a rotten apple because I did not commit these heinous crimes. And those who committed these crimes would be the most stupid person on earth. And I would not imagine that anyone could commit such a very serious crime. The President. Thank you. Now, I refer these five questions to Mr. Nguyen Chia. Mr. Nguyen Chia, my respect to the chamber and the court The President, Mr. Nguyen Chia, please proceed.
interpreter interrupts, uh, it is not audible for the interpreter. The President, Mr. Nunjia, please uh, hold on because uh, your voice is not being transmitted uh, to the courtroom. So uh, hold on for a moment. Mr. Nunjia, I have commented on the various questions uh, posed by the civil parties. Once again, I would like to reiterate that I am responsible for what had happened during the period of the Democratic Kampuchea. I am not evading my responsibility. I am bearing the responsibility from my heart. I am being frank with you in my capacity as a member of the Democratic Kampuchea. I accept the responsibility even though I committed directly or indirectly, but I feel remorseful uh, for the crimes that were committed intentionally or unintentionally and whether or not I had known about it or not known about it. And I would like to reiterate that I take the responsibility morally. Morally, I take the responsibility. I need to emphasize. And on this occasion, let me express my sincere condolences uh, to the loss of your family members, Mr. Rumdul. To my recollection, your name is Rumdul. And I would like uh, to once again clarify my role during the Democratic Kampuchea period. Point one. I was the Deputy Secretary and a permanent or standing committee member of the Communist Party of Kampuchea in charge of internal education and propaganda. Point number two. I was in charge of the chairman of the Committee of People's Assembly of Kampuchea. These were my two main roles. Uh, in, as for the role in the executive branch, I did not have any power or authority in the executive uh, branch. And this, was the, this is the fact, and I will leave to the chamber uh, to find out and decide uh, based on this uh, fact. And what I did in the past was for the interests of my country and people.